Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel that Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. As we continue to go through the second coming, this is part three. And before we start, if you have never heard of Paul's My Gospel, which is only found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it's not found in the red letters. The Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry never tells anybody that his death, burial, and resurrection is going to pay for their sins. As a matter of fact, Peter, James, and John did not believe that Jesus Christ was going to rise again. They knew not what he was saying. But yet, people claim that Peter, James, and John have the same message as the Apostle Paul. The only reason why they claim that is because they're not Bible believers. As a matter of fact, they probably don't even have a Bible. Do you have a 1769 King James Bible, God's perfect words without error? Because if you don't, you don't have a Bible. Sorry to say that, but it's true. You do not have a Bible. And you better get one because if you are saved and you die and your soul goes to heaven before the judgment seat of Christ, your sins are paid for. But what about your workmanship? What about your service to the Lord? What kind of service are you going to do if you don't even have a Bible? So you're probably going to get wood, hay, and stubble if you're saved. That's pretty sad. So you need to get things right. Trust Paul's my gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul declares it's the gospel. Verse 2, it's how ye are saved. Verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. His shed blood on Calvary's cross is what paid for your sins and mine. And he was buried and rose again on the third day. That is all a product of Paul's gospel, the gospel of God's grace. Romans 1, 16, the power of Christ unto salvation. If you have a new translation... Christ is missing in Romans 1.16. So I would, you know, use that new translation to point out the errors to people and get yourself a 1769 King James Bible. You can go to the dollar store and get it for a buck. Or you can go to Cambridge or Oxford if you, if you really want one of the nice ones. But I would stay away from Zondervan, you know, good old Pat Zondervan. Anyway, the question that this track asks on the back of it. And again, there's no gospel in this track, which is sad. They're all about Israel. They don't know if they're going up or down. They don't know if they're going to go to heaven or the earth. They don't know if they're going to go to heaven or hell on this track. But it says, will it affect me? On the back of this track, will it affect me? And the verse is Matthew 24, 40. I don't know what Bible they use. They don't tell us. It says, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. If you miss the rapture, and you know by definition that means rape, you will be left behind to go through the great tribulation. He's talking to us, right? That we'll be left behind to go through the great tribulation. There is then, as a non-believer, you will end up in hell for all eternity. So let me ask you the question again. It says, will it affect me? They say yes. Here's my answer. No. Okay? I'm not Israel. I'm a member of the church, the body of Christ. Okay? So when you're a member of the church, the body of Christ, I guess the question is, is are you going to go through the tribulation? If you're a member of the church, the body of Christ, who has to go through the tribulation to inherit the kingdom? Oh, Israel does. It's based on their faith plus works, right? That's what James tell us. If they don't have works, they have no faith, right? So if you think that you're Israel and you're not going to go through the tribulation, something's wrong there. That's backwards. That is backwards, okay? Ephesians 1.3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Heavenly places, okay? 
Matthew 24, 40 is all about the earth, earthly places, not heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us us quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So did you know that? When you're saved, you're already sitting with Christ Jesus in heaven. The question is, is do you believe that? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. With Israel's program and the tribulation, is it a gift of God or is it all of them, all of their selves to get through the tribulation? It's faith plus their works, right? James tells us that. Who is James writing to? Oh, I know, that's, that's tough. He's, he's writing to us, right? No, James chapter 1, verse 1, he is writing to Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. Is that you or me? No, Romans chapter 11 says Israel's fallen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 says we were always strangers. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Strangers of the law and the covenants of promise. Who's putting you back under the law? <clears throat> They're bewitching you. Remember Galatians warns us of that? 2 Corinthians tells us there's ministers of Satan where it's all about their righteousness. Hmm. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Galatians 2, 20 and 21, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. It's just amazing to me that this track has everything backwards. And who is the Antichrist? Hmm. Who makes everything backwards doctrinally? Hmm. That's a tough one, right? Much more than, Romans 5, 9, and 10, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. When people do not follow the instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ through our Apostle Paul, out of 2 Timothy 2.15, that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is a product of wrong division, this track, okay? This is a product of no Bible that they believe. They use the word rapture. Is that Bible believing? Is that a Bible believing Christian? Why would a Bible believing Christian use the word rapture? It's not in the Bible. That's like a Bible-believing Christian producing tracts that say Christmas on it. Why would a Bible-believing Christian do that? Christmas is not in the Bible. Answer, they wouldn't do that because they believe their Bible. Now, if I was Roman Catholic, I would produce Christmas tracts because Christ was in their mass. He was never in mine. Christ was always in my Bible and conceived in December 
but not born, okay? And the Lord Jesus Christ never says to celebrate his birthday or anyone else's. So get over it already. Grow up and be a Bible-believing Christian. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So again, will it affect me? No, okay? The two left in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. The one that is taken is sifted up like wheat by the devil. Okay, remember that in the second coming part two? We touched that subject already. Who gets sifted like wheat? They don't tell you that. Because they don't read and study their Bible. They don't know how to rightly divide and keep the church, the body of Christ, separate from Israel's prophetic program. Because Matthew 24, 40 is all Israel's prophetic program. It has nothing to do with the church, the body of Christ. Two being in the field and one being taken... That's all Israel's prophetic program. The church, the body of Christ, is nowhere to be found there. So then the next question, how can it be true? And they say, Jesus said so. Oh, really? Did you know that Jesus was only talking to Israel, not anyone today? What do you do at Romans 15, 8? where Jesus Christ is a minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Jesus Christ is a minister to the circumcision. Matthew chapter 15 says he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when you have a pastor that's telling you to do what Jesus said to do, he's lying. The Bible never says to follow Jesus never tells anyone today to do that. The followers of Jesus were before the cross. The followers of Jesus were in the Old Testament, under the law, under the covenant. The followers of Jesus were the lost sheep of the house of Israel who Jesus was sent to. The followers of Jesus were the circumcision Is that you or me? We were strangers to the law and covenant. We were heathen. We were enemies, Romans 5.10, Ephesians 2.12. Who were Jesus' friends in, in John, in the Old Testament? Anything before Jesus Christ dies on the cross is Old Testament doctrine for Israel on the, he, on the authority, authority of Hebrews 9. 15 through 18. So get over it. I'm sorry if you have a new translation and you read Hebrews chapter 9 and it's all confusing. It's not clear. Because you don't have God's words. I'm sorry when you read Galatians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, 7, 8, and 9. You don't see two gospels there. Because you're not, because you don't have a Bible. You'd rather believe the word rapture which from the etymology is all about rape. But, you know, your pastor is smarter than you though, right? You have a thousand people in your congregation all looking up at this guy who doesn't even have a Bible and nobody even asks him questions or challenges him. You just go along with him. Or are you one of those people like my old friend Stan who had a list 10 things why I'm going to stay at this church and 10 things why I'm going to leave. Well, if you have 10 reasons why you're going to leave, leave. You shouldn't have any reason to leave. If they're teaching things right. So last question on this track. What should I do? You should burn this track. You shouldn't give it to anybody because it's going to condemn their soul to hell. What should I do? They say, repent, believe, believe. And be saved. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 
Okay? I don't know what translation. They don't tell us. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Acts 16.31 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 so we went through this track completely, and the gospel of God's grace, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, is never mentioned. But they mention, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe what? And then they mention, repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent of what? And be converted. Converted from what? And my sins blotted out? They're not paid for? There's blotted? Huh? Oh, but they have Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved. What is that? Grace, I'm saved. So God's nice to me and I'm saved. Is that how it works? Is that grace? Is that God's grace? Repent, believe, be saved. What am I repenting of? What am I believing of? And how am I saved with these three verses that they give us? How? So repentance that your sins are blotted out is Israel's promise, not anyone's gospel today. Trust Paul's gospel and you will be saved today. This is the gospel not found in this track that is all about Israel's prophetic program, where no one is saved until Christ comes again for them. You get that? The Lord Jesus Christ saves Israel when they make it to the kingdom at the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The way we are saved today is by trusting Paul's my gospel according to the revelation of the mystery in the dispensation of God's grace, if you've ever heard of it, Ephesians chapter 3. And according to Paul's writings, which are the commandments of the Lord today, 1 Corinthians 14, 37, Paul tells us the gospel that saves our never-dying soul. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Notice that's not the red letters. Notice that's not the Old Testament. Notice that's not even... Notice that's not even from Hebrews to Revelation. Paul's my gospel is not even in Acts chapters 1 through 8. He's still Saul of Tarsus. Paul's my gospel is never mentioned by the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Lord Jesus Christ gave it to the Apostle Paul in Galatians. He gave it to the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9. Galatians 1.11 confirms it. Here is the gospel of God's grace that saves your and my never dying so today, based on the Lord Jesus Christ shed blood on Calvary's cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, do me a favor. If you find this track, throw it out. It is a product of poor workmanship and not rightly dividing the word of truth, which Paul, through Christ, tells us to do. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The only reason why you have a hard time studying is because your new translation doesn't tell you to. The only, time, the only reason why you have a hard time rightly dividing the word of truth is because your pastor will never tell you to do that because it's not in the dumbed-down new Roman Catholic, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, West Cotton Horde text from hell, Okay. When you have a devil who gets a hold of the text, what do you think the devil's going to do? The devil's in the doctrine, people. 1 Timothy chapter 4 tells us that. And the devil is going to use the doctrine to twist and to condemn your never-dying soul. So get yourself a 1769 King James Bible. 
Study it to show yourself approved unto God. Be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed and rightly divide the word of truth. Thanks again for listening. As we conclude this gospel track with no gospel, tell your friends about it. Tell your friends that, hey, there's, there's this guy on the internet. He preaches about gospel tracks that have no gospel. Maybe your friends haven't heard a message like this. Maybe your friends are unsaved and on their way to hell. So let people know about God's perfect words and about God's gospel of his grace. Paul's my gospel which he declares in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions from my website at preachingthegospelatsaves.com from the contact page. Subscribe to my two YouTube channels, my bookstore blog, and check out my study on Ephesians. Thanks again.